warm welcome. Um, I hope uh, you can all listen to us. Um, we're going to give uh, one or two more minutes for the rest of the audience to uh, join. And then um, all of us here, uh, Thomas, Lin Xiao, and myself, will be taking you through uh, this webinar today, um, hoping that um, all of you that are joining us from uh, mainly Asia, Asia Pacific, but uh, also the rest of the world, um, are able to listen to us um, and uh, we'll be giving you some instructions on how to interact with us as well. Um, so let's give one or two more minutes to, to people. In the meantime, for those of you that are there, um, you can be checking uh, your panels. Uh, we'll be giving these instructions in a minute as well, but there is a questions um tab in which you will be able to interact with us uh, so if some of you want to give it a little test uh you can write a question a greeting or something there um and then all of us thomas Ling Xian, myself can confirm if we are uh communicating with you uh, because all 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 you can do is so you can see us but we don't see you uh, we yeah. we're not going to be we're respecting over 200 people probably um, so we are not going to be able to uh, to interact with you with all of you um, but you you can use that question area uh, to interact with us so we'll give you one more minute and we'll be doing the um, the introductions and, and then we will be taking you through this very exciting webinar today. Okay. I don't see anybody writing any questions or anything. So I hope you can all listen to us. Um, we are joining you, in my case, from Hong Kong. Lin Xiao and Thomas um, are in Austria. Um, and and we're respecting you guys joining from from all over the place we have uh, people from india china uh, indonesia malaysia thailand vietnam philippines uh, taiwan korea japan many many different countries today so okay so it's two minutes past and we are going to officially start the webinar. Okay, so hello and welcome all of you. My name is Marcos Garcia. I'm the uh, Business Development Manager of Regal in Asia Pacific. Uh, and today um, I have with me uh, Thomas Geisecker, uh, who's Manager of uh, the, in the Business Division of Mining. Um, and he will be taking us through all the technical aspects related to, to this presentation. Uh, Thomas is a, a very experienced senior person in the company um, with uh, years and years uh, behind uh, his back um, of, of um, dealing uh, not only with TLS, uh, not, not only with terrestrial scanners, but much more, that very much specializing in, in mining as well. Um, but we are not just concentrating on mining today. Uh, we have landslide monitoring and topography as it expands the realm of what uh, the, the instruments can do. Um, we also have today uh, our managing director of Regal China, uh, Dr. Ling Xiao Zhu, um, who will be mainly also helping uh, that audience that is joining us from, from China. Um, we are going to be using the questions tab throughout the presentation so that you can start asking us questions. Um, you can write the questions in English or in Chinese if you need to. Uh, Ling Xiao will be able to, to help you with those. Uh, we will try to answer as many questions as possible throughout the presentation. And at the end, we will also have a questions and answers 
um, time uh, in which we will interact a little bit more directly with you. Um, and uh, Lin Xiao, please, if you want to introduce yourself and, and say a few okay. words. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Lin Xiaozhu. I'm the uh, director of uh, uh, managing director of Rigo China. Uh, Rigo China uh, uh, Chinese webinar. webinar. Thomas Marcus Thomas, please. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Lin Chao, and thanks, Marcus, for the kind introduction. I will take over now and I will guide you through that this webinar for the next um, 30 to 40 minutes. But before we start, I would like to ask you just a couple of questions and please just answer these questions with yes and no so that we get just a better understanding about our audience so i just uh launch here the first question so do you use already regal lighter systems uh, so just click on yes and no so that we can uh, better understand the audience so already 50% of the audience voted, vot voted. So I just give you a couple of seconds more. Okay. And I would say now we have 80% voted. So I think that's fine. I will now uh, close the question. and share the answers with you. So uh, we see clearly uh, around 60% of you already using our systems. Uh, that's very nice to see. And 40% are new. So please to the 40% in the webinar, some, some of the aspects are also uh, quite technically. So please have an understanding on that and again ask your questions and send also email requests later and for the 60 percent answered with yes i hope we can show you new aspects how to use our systems so i share the next question Are you interested in autonomous data acquisition and remote control with your Regal laser scanner? So this is, uh, of course, mainly for the already existing users, but also potentially for new users, uh, because I would say this is really a USB point of our equipment uh, that our scanners can be easily integrated into networks and being remotely operated uh, without any user interaction on the scanner itself. That can be very interesting thing for, for um, permanent uh, scanner installations. So ARM, um, 70% voted already. So uh, I think that's fine for the moment because it's a very interesting um the answers are showing a very interesting result i just share the result and it shows of course almost all the audience are interested in that so that's also important for me because this is one of our focus in this uh webinar and in this presentation so i hope i can give you some further aspects on that later so let me just show the uh, third poll question. Would you like to make use of apps for autonomous data acquisition and processing on the Regal TLS system? 
Maybe also while you're voting, just a short introduction on apps. You can understand our, the scanner is more or less like the modern smartphones. It is a scanner and it has all the functionality, but users can install further apps doing um, special things, special kind of data acquisition, special kind of data processing and delivering directly results without any post-processing. And I will show you this also within our today's webinar. So I just uh, close this uh, question also. And again, a very interesting result. Most of you, again, more than 90% are interested in that. So that shows me clearly that we have the right audience for that webinar. And I can hope that I can give you some new aspects on that during the next 30 to 40 minutes. So I would say we are ready to start now. Okay, uh, let me give you, first of all, the title of the webinar, latest news on mine planning, landslab monitoring and topography scanning with the new Regal tools. Mm -hmm. Let me give you a short overview on the content. I will speak for the new users, of course, uh, in a few words about the Regal scanner portfolio. I will thereafter highlight our brand new VSET i20M heavy duty camera to be used on the uh, TLS system. Thereafter, I will speak also about utilizing prisms with the Regal VZ I series scanners because in the past we remember prisms were a problem, even damaged sometimes laser scanners, but now we can really make use of such prisms. And I would say we can almost scan these prisms and measure these prisms in almost the same quality as a total station is doing. Thereafter, I will highlight the new List Geotech plugin for RiseCam Pro and Rai Mining. This is a, a tool for geotechnical applications and geological applications. Very interesting. I will speak about that. And I will also um, explain you the voxel comparison tool for fast and efficient 3D data comparison within our software RiseCam Pro and Rai Mining. This is also a very powerful tool. And then in the second part of the webinar, I will focus on how can Regal support future trends in mining. But here I don't mean only mining. I will also speak about how we can support future trends in landslide monitoring, our, our terrestrial uh, topography scanning. And the, the main topic is here how we can connect our scanners to any computer network and how to utilize apps on the Regal VZI series scanners. So now let us have a look on our TLS, terrestrial laser scanning portfolio. I just highlight here the Regal VZ2000i and the Regal VZ4000. We have also a Regal VZ 400i with a reduced maximum range of 800 meters, but this is not the instrument of choice for long range scanning. Uh, the Regal VZ 2000i has a maximum range of 2.5 kilometers, and this is really the instrument mainly used for long range scanning, for topography scanning in mining applications, and for special niche niche projects, we offer also the Regal VZ 4000 with an extended maximum range of four kilometers. This uh, scanner uh, is already on the market since several years and it's perfectly covering this uh, niche because there is no other scanner on the market offering such a long maximum range. And there is even one scanner uh, ahead, there is the Regal VZ 6000 with six kilometer maximum range, but uh, I don't highlight it here because this instrument is mainly used for snow and ice applications where you need that long range. And I think the uh, Asian Pacific region is not really the region for snow and ice applications. So these scanners are used for different static setups, 
for sporadic, periodic or permanent data acquisition, as you see here on the bottom, permanent installations on concrete pillars and for permanent data acquisition, we even offer industrial housings for the scanners so that these scanners can be operated in extremely harsh conditions in 24-7 um, applications. The VSET 2000i is also very often mounted on vehicles for stop and go laser scanning. So you simply mount the scanner on top of the vehicle and in the high speed program the scanner is extremely fast so you just stop your vehicle doing a 30 second scan and you get a whole uh, 3D panorama of the 360 degree within 30 seconds. Then you just move the car to the next position, let's say further 100 meters away, stop the vehicle and do the next scan, 30 scan positions. So our customers doing with that workflow normally hundreds of scan positions within one working day and the data is registered on the scanner automatically into one common coordinate system. The coordinate system of your choice can be a mining coordinate system or a national grid system or whatever. And of course this scanner can be also integrated in a full mobile laser scan system as you see here on the left our Regal VMZ system. So once this scanner is integrated into that VMZ system it can be used for real mobile laser scanning. So that in that case, then the data is acquired during driving the car. While the car is moving, we acquire the data. So this is real mobile laser scanning. In 2014, we started with our ULS portfolio. ULS stands for unmanned laser scanning. We introduced in 2014 our first sensor for unmanned laser scanning, the VOX scanner, which you can see here on the upright position, mounted on our own developed UAV platform, the Rycopter. Uh, but then we have also smaller sensors, namely the mini VOX system. You see it here on the DJI M300 drone. We are uh, we just introduced the inter uh, integration kit for that drone. So this um, uh, airborne laser scan system, the Mini View X, has just uh, is just a payload of around two kilograms and can be easily carried by such a small drone. And we also just introduced our brand new uh, View X 120 scanner, which is a really um, high-end uh, ULS system, a little bit larger, therefore here mounted on the DJI M600 drone. But these sensors now really bring uh, classical airborne laser scanning into everyday mine data acquisition, but again also for landslide monitoring, topography scanning, because up to now for such small projects it was not possible to realize a real airborne laser scanning um, uh, data acquisition because it was simply too expensive to bring a helicopter into a small project and now with a UAV you can realize such data acquisitions even on small projects and these scanners delivering incredible point densities, thousands of points if necessary on a single square meter. They can penetrate even dense vegetation extremely strongly and uh, acquiring data on the ground below the dense vegetation. So incredible systems. So this was our um, portfolio of scanners, but now I jump more into the TLS section, the terrestrial laser scanning sections and we just introduced a, a brand new camera hardware, the Regal VZI-20M heavy duty camera. I mean we had already in the past a very nice camera uh, integration. We are using the Nikon cameras, they're delivering excellent uh, image data 
but for harsh environments, these kind of cameras are simply not made. And this new camera has now uh, just 1.2 kilogram and it offers a protection class IP64, which is the same as the scanner. So the sensor itself is fully how inside this housing. This housing uh, is climatized. Um, uh, so we have a stable temperature inside. Uh, the, this camera can uh, be operated under extreme temperatures from minus 20 to plus 60 uh, degree. Um, and again, there is no cable uh, outside. Everything is integrated and we are using on top of the scanner the so-called uh, gig e vision interface so so you just mount the camera on the scanner the ca camera is detected by the scanner and camera control is realized by the graphical uh, user interface of the scanner so you you don't have to touch the camera on top of the scanner it delivers uh, uh, it's using a 20 megapixel um, chip uh, which delivers really high resolution images it has a field of view of 40 degree horizontal and around 60 degree in vertical direction and of course on top of that camera you can mount your own gnss receiver which can be connected with the scanner delivering rtk data for correct positioning of the scanner within centimeters Okay, next let's speak about uh, utilizing prisms with the Regal VZ-I series scanners. As I already explained before, in the past prisms were really big problems for terrestrial laser scanners because you have to understand these laser scanners are made for working on extreme long ranges where we get from a normal service just a very small amplitude um, of um, reflectivity back to the scanner which has to be detected and now we are scanning on a mirror which reflects all the laser power back to the scanner and that can really damage the detector of the scanner but in principle we can say we have learned from nature because what happens your eyes are optimized for normal daylight and even for some night situations, but they are not. Uh, your eyes are not optimized for extreme bright light. So when you look directly into the sun, what happens? You shut immediately by a reflex your eyes to protect your eyes. And the same we do with the scanner. So immediately when the scanner gets a very high amplitude back, it's switching off the detector for some milliseconds to protect the scanner. We see this here on the right side on this prism. There is a blue line underneath. So the reflect the amplitude was here so high that we switched off the detector for some milliseconds, losing here some data but protecting the scanner. And we can measuring this target. So once this target is detected, in a second step we do a fine scan of that target. And when fine scanning such a target, we are uh, uh, switching the, the measurement program on the scanner into the reflector program, which is using much less laser power because we are not just measuring on that uh, prism and not on normal surface. So we reduce the laser power to be sure that we can measure on this um, glass prism and getting it very accurate measured. We have also uh, implemented a reflector model, which can be defined now on the scanner graphical user interface and also within our software. So the user can define the shape of the target, the diameter, the reflector constant, or also called offset. So under shape, you can, can define a prism, a normal flat rate reflective target or a cylinder. And once we have the fine scan of this target, we fit in the model into the scan data. And this is now very important. We are getting now an attribute within the tile point list about the quality of the fine scan of the target, which gives you a very good estimation if the target was correctly measured. So we see here 100% quality, 99% quality. These targets are really of 
high accuracy. Well, we have here some targets of less accuracy, just with uh, 40%. Normally, such targets are, the, there is a, a wrong model defined for such targets and therefore the quality drops down. But you can easily remove these targets then from your list so to avoid wrong measurements. Uh, this is really a very helpful tool now. Um, we see here a, a test. Uh, we have a long-term customer in Germany. It's the co company DMT and they have tested uh, the range performance on our scanner measuring on a glass prism on a well-defined um, distance, which is at exactly 1,200 meters, dot 0404 meters, and they have measured from the scanner to that prism over the whole day from um, morning till evening, and you see here the range measurements, and underneath you see the temperature curve, which is indicating a strong dependency between these two, which shows that the correct atmospheric setting was still not applied on that data. So we, if we would apply that on this data, all the measurements would stay within this boundary of plus minus two millimeters, which is really very, very accurate on such a long distance of 1,200 meters. And therefore I would say we can measure now such prisons more or less with the same quality as any total station. So the next topic, I would like to introduce our brand new LIS Geotech plugin for RiceCam Pro and RAM Mining. And please be aware, you see here a QR code. Uh, you can either scan that QR code or you can simply uh, start YouTube and search for, for example, for Regal and Geotech and you will find immediately our marketing video on, on this plugin for if you are interested to see further details on, on this plugin. So what is this plugin doing? It's, cal it's for calculation of local dip angles and dip directions. And these results are stored as a new attribute within the Regal database. Our dip angle and dip direction are very, very important features for all uh, geotechnical applications and geological applications. You get the predominant orientation analysis by a stereo net pole plots uh, on the graphical user interface which you see here on the right. You can The user can define the number of classes and the class separation settings. The resulting pole plots are stored as an image and are available for later on use. And as already mentioned, the classes of orientations are stored as a new attribute within the RDB database. Uh, you see here again the graphical user interface of this plugin. And you see here on top one of such a pole bot which is created. So, of course, this plugin is mainly for rock face analysis. Uh, we are all not specialists are in that field, so I don't know how to interpret exactly such a pole plot, but it simply shows you the, the, the different clusters of orientations uh, of rock faces. Are, and again, this is a new attribute on your scan data, and you can use this within the view type now for visualization. And if we zoom in a little bit, you see clearly the benefit of it. If you're a, a geotech or person, you can immediately see the predominant orientations of the green colored rock faces in that direction and the yellow colored rock faces in that direction, while the red colored one are not that steep because it's closer to the center of this pole plot uh, and they are colored in red. And specialists can read out from such pole plots instabilities, possible instabilities of the rock faces. They can estimate the direction of joints and folds. So this is really, really a helpful tool. In the past, there are 
users had to go into third-party software products to analyze the scan data but this was not so easy because you had to extract normal vectors of your scan data you had to export this data normally this third-party software products cannot handle millions of, of data sets uh, and therefore we um, decided to uh, develop this plugin directly within RiseCamp Pro and now if you watch the video you will see with a few mouse clicks you get the results immediately even in the field if it's necessary to uh, to get uh, a, a database to make further decisions on the stability of the rock face okay let's go on let's speak about the voxel uh, comparison tool uh, this is also a very very powerful tool we have implemented it i would say already one year ago uh, within RiseCamp pro and Ry mining and again for further information watch the regal youtube video search for regal and voxel comparison and you will find it immediately so what is this tool doing first of all you simply select one scan of your project and right mouse click and use the option extract voxels this creates such a voxel data set with a defined voxel size so the user defines the voxel size and the data within each voxel is analyzed and the software calculates a best fitting plane and also gives you the standard deviation uh, of the scan data in respect to that estimated plane within each voxel and of course we are getting also the normal vectors which are defining the orientation of the planes this you all get with one mouse click on your scan data and using extract voxels the next step is that you select another data set or a number of data sets this can be scans point clouds or another voxel data set and this can now be compared against the voxel data set which you just created before as a reference and these as, uh, these data sets now are getting a new attribute it's called distance to surface which is representing the distance along the normal vector to the next uh, plane within the reference data set and you can use this new point attribute simply within your view type setting for visualization of these differences so you see just a few mouse clicks and you have a result i show you now uh, two different examples where we have used that tool uh, this is a, a, a mining example. There was a, a slope within a big open cast uh, coal mine in Germany. We, uh, have, we had a fixed installation of the scanner and we scanned every two minutes that slope. Um, and then we used um, the voxel extractor to create such a voxel data set. We defined the cell size of the voxel of 50 centimeters and the distance to the object was approximately 100 meters and if we now go to time we see or uh, some minutes later we see already that all this area is now colored here in yellow which means the data comes towards us but this is not a big distance it's just showing here if you see the settings 1.5 centimeters would be in red so the movement here is just a few millimeters if you would be a, a, a visual observer of that slope you would not even see anything at that stage but the data shows you already the movement which means you can start at that point already with evacuation of the area removing the, uh, the machines and also uh, human beings and employees just to be safe just in case if something happens we have scanned them every two minutes further and we see after another 30 minutes really the whole slope collapsed 
So this tool gives us a lead time of approximately 30 minutes before the real slope failure happens. And again, this is just within our software with a few mouse clicks available. So let me show you the second example for the voxel comparison tool. I have chosen here an underground example to have real 3D data. This is a very famous uh, ice cave in Austria, but you can see it as an example for underground mining or even for tunnel construction, which is a, a similar situation. Uh, we have scanned this ice cave in consecutive years by approximately 350 scan positions. So the data acquisition for the whole cave just needed around two days. And the automatic registration on the scanner was performed. So the scan data was directly registered while we realized the data acquisition. Thereafter, we created one common point cloud with millimeters of, of um, space distance. Uh, I think the result was around uh, 2 billion points. Uh, and then it is almost zero post-processing to get these two data sets compared. And you see here the results in this voxel data set again, colored um, showing the, the zones of ice decreasing. Uh, from yellow to red colors and the zones of ice increasing in Syrian to blue colors. And important to mention here and just keep in mind, this is a real uh, 3D comparison. It works also on vertical areas, even on overhanging parts, even on the ceiling of, of the underground mining or, or the tunnel. Uh, can be also used for, for measuring um, a, a concrete layer on a, on a tunnel rock face. So there are many applications for that. And again, it's fast, easy to use, and a real 3D data comparison. A very powerful tool within RISCAM Pro and RAM Mining. So now we come to the second part uh, of the webinar. Uh, I would like to speak about how to integrate our scanners into a typical network configuration. So I just show here a typical side network. So you have, a, let's say, a DHCP server, some uh, computers connected, and maybe other computers thousands of kilometers away connected via internet and VPN connection. So this is simply a very typical standard our network. We have the same thing. We have in our headquarters such a network and I can connect from anywhere in the world via VPN connection into that network. Our next slide shows, uh, and I call this a smart network configuration. So instead of a normal DHCP server, we have here a Wi-Fi access point or hotspot and not only computers are connected, but also machines and maybe operators of the machines are connected with their laptops with this uh, access point. So I call this a smart network configuration. And it is extremely easy to integrate our scanner within such a network because our scanner is simply a uh, can be seen as a computer or it's a Linux computer and it has an IP address and it can be easily integrated in any network. And uh, I just show here not only the, the scanner but also a file server because I would like to introduce now from the scanner graphical user interface a new app. We call it the rsync app which is for data synchronization. So you can see here on the on the uh, graphical user interface the settings you can mount for example any file server or NAS drive can be even a cloud space if, if it, from any provider and you can mount that on the scanner so this is available like a drive on the scanner and then you start your rsync app and you can store your data on the 
internal memory of the scanner, but in the background you can automatically synchronize based on a, on a, on a time uh, interval here, you can synchronize your data to that network attached storage, which means if the scanner is switched off after data acquisition, the data is directly available within the whole network via this file server. And again, it can be also a cloud space. So this is really a powerful tool for real-time data synchronization. And I just explained that, and I keep this here on the corner, just to uh, introduce now the new apps which we have developed for our VZI series scanners. And I simply think you can use these apps even standalone with the scanner without any network, but you get the best benefit out of these apps if the scanner is embedded into a network configuration. Our, these apps are called mining apps, but again can be used for monitoring of landslide and topography scanning also. First, and again, we have here also a new, a brand new real YouTube video, which uh, shows our further information about these apps within the video. First of all, I would like to introduce the monitoring app for automatic change detection. It calculates and visualizes differences in respect to a reference scan and threshold values for the change detections can be flexible defined. So when you start that app on the scanner, um, you're guided through the graphical user interface to define all the relevant parameters. You, so you start with the project information, you define your project, you define where you store your project, you define the scan position, you define the scan pattern. Next, you define the timer settings. You can use a fixed interval, you can define any schedule based on a Chrome script and you can uh, use a, a manual timer setting. And the next is you define your threshold values for the change detections and your color tables. And then you simply start the monitoring by clicking on the start button. And important now is this app is doing everything autonomous. It's doing the data acquisition, the analyzing of the data and delivers final results automatically. And these final results are published via a web server. So the web server runs on the scanner itself. The results are published via that web server, which means if somebody within that network, maybe the operator of a machine wants to see the results, he just has to be connected with the web server via the via the network and he is just using his standard web browser there is no need for some extra software no software installation no learning how to use a software it is just a web browser showing the results of the monitoring app and again as mentioned before the web server runs on the scanner but if you use, as mentioned before, the rsync app for real-time data synchronization, the data can be stored on such a NAS drive, which can also act as a web server. So when the scanner is turned off, also the results are available within the whole network. So this web server shows here, for example, the differences are of, of any scan to a given reference scan. So you can define the reference uh, within your web browser tool. You can slide through the whole epoch of data sets. You can handle the appearance of your data and you can even overrule the threshold values from the app by defining your own threshold values and your own color tables within the web browser. You can even highlight certain spots which you want to monitor and when you slide through the scan data, it's updating immediately and you can also print that directly on paper so that's really a powerful tool and again no extra software just running on the standard web browser and also very important to mention all the the apps i show here 
no extra cost. You just have to have the latest firmware on the scanner and you can get from us the installer for these apps free of charge. The second app, we call it the, 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 the design compare app for real-time analysis of under and overcut to a given model. So that in difference to the monitoring app where the reference data is scan data, here the reference data now is, for example, uh, a mine model, a design model, which is stored as an STL format and that can be defined within the, the graphical user interface of that app and you define also the coordinate system of that design and then further on your threshold values and now the app shows you the differences uh, of your real scan data to the given design model again on the web browser so just as an idea if you are the operator of such a digging machine digging here material and you are connected via the network with your computer in your operator housing here and using your normal uh, web browser you get real-time results what happens when you dig here the gray zones are showing you are within the limits to the given model the the blue zones are showing you have here uh, undercuts uh, which means you are losing money because you could dig even more but the overcuts here shown in red are even more uh, critical because you have digged too much which means that a as a result maybe the whole uh, pit is then unstable and can collapse so you have to avoid that and again this app gives you real-time information on your actions here and finally we have the slope angle app for real-time slope analysis uh, it's simply uh, within the graphical user interface you define again here your color table and your threshold values for example your high threshold is 70 degree your low threshold is 5 degree so under 5 degree you don't want to colorize your scan data over 70 degree it should be highlighted in that example in pink so for example if this is a big stockpile and you are you are the operator of that loader driving up here dumping the material down you see immediately how the dumping of the material uh, influences the slope and and uh, critical areas are immediately highlighted because normally you have to stay within a certain maximum slope degree again you see that these apps really supporting you and your customers and our customers with uh, real-time data information and real-time uh, results thank you for your kind attention and i would like to uh, hand over now to markus and ling shao just uh, checking if there are some uh, questions from the audience already available now. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you. Uh, great, uh, great presentation. Uh, as you, uh, some of you know, um, and and for those of you that are new to Regal, um, Regal has uh, not only a network of uh, of of resellers around the world. We have a heavy presence in Asia Pacific as well. And um, our aim is to bring you presentations like this so that we can look at more technical aspects that are not sometimes available to you. Uh, but we are also here to answer any, any questions uh, related to uh, your plans in your regions, your needs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so uh, you have all our contact details there. Please uh, make use of them. Um, we have a rather shy audience today. We we have a a question uh, coming from Sahib Mahiti. Um, and it's saying, well, are there any planning for upgrading the VC4000 to be 
VC 4000i. Uh, kindly confirm. Okay, uh, thanks for that question. Uh, for that question, uh, in my eyes, this is a, a logical question. As I said already, within the web in R, the VZ4000 scanner is a well established scanner for niche applications where, where you really need the, the long range of uh, four kilometers. Uh, I mean, you can say it's clearly understandable uh, that this is something for the future uh, to have uh, the possibilities of the VZI series scanners also available on, on these, uh, this scanner type. So, um, no official launch, nothing is available yet, but I think it is on our list and with the normal uh, uh, developments, I hope that it will come within the next years. Uh, there will be something like that so that uh, the scanner, the VZ4000 then has the same or similar graphical user interface as the VZ2000i now and the same possibilities which I just highlighted with using apps and, and so on. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, it's very important, uh, Said, that uh, your feedback is really important to us. So feedback like this uh, for all of you here today, um, it will also help us driving our innovation. So if you see any particular needs um, for, for your area, please get in touch with us because we always like to listen to the audience um, and, and see if we can meet those expectations. Uh, Thomas, we have another question uh, where we are being asked if, if the voxel comparison feature is available in version 261. I'm just uh, wondering about the version number here because I just opened our, on my second screen the, the latest version of RiseCam Pro, which is now version 2. 0.113. So we have not reached 2.6. Um, I I cannot exactly tell you at what uh, with which version uh, mm -hmm. we have introduced the voxel comparison feature. But please, uh, you know, uh, you have on your uh, RiseCam Pro uh, within the help you have. Um, you have the revision history available and it shows clearly uh, if the voxel comparison tool is available or not. I just have in my mind that I think we have introduced it around one year before something like that. So beginning of 2020 or even already 2019, I don't remember exactly. But nevertheless, if you're a customer, I would always recommend to stay within the maintenance contract of your software, simply to have the possibility always to upgrade to the latest version of the software, and also to have the possibility to upgrade to the latest firmware version of your scanner, if you're uh, using a VZI series scanner. Because only if you use the latest version of the software, you can also um, update to the latest version, firmware version of the scanner, and also new firmware versions on the scanner gives you more possibilities by using new apps, for example. So uh, the costs for the software and firmware maintenance are quite low. So I would really recommend to make use of that. And it seems we yeah. have a question coming from China as well. Ling Xiao, please. Yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, we have uh, two questions from uh, a Chinese colleague. Uh, his question, uh, the first one is, is a software upgrade is free of charge? And the second one is uh, uh, after the upgrading, uh, is there any requirement for the risk and Pro version uh, about the software upgrading? Yeah. I, I think I already yeah. answered. Yeah, uh, yes, yes. this is already our answer. Uh, 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let me just explain again. Uh, it's always necessary uh, to see uh, firmware and software parallel. If you uh, use the latest uh, software version, you can also use the latest firmware version on the scanner. You cannot use an old version of the software and the latest firmware. So you have to keep both things uh, updated uh, and our um, software update uh, is depending on the software maintenance contract. So the only thing what I can say is please uh, keep your software updated and as you know the software maintenance uh, is quite low price at Regal so I think it should not be a big issue. Maybe you just um, or I'll translate that in a few words into Chinese, Ling Shao. Oh, yeah. Uh, <coughs> sorry. So Thomas, uh, 刚刚刚才提到的问题是，刚才他解释的是，呃、uh, ，现在有两个问题，一个是 firmware 啊、uh, ，一个是固件的升级，一个是软件的升级。他说需如果需呃需要用最新的固件，必须要把软件升级到最新的一个版本。然后呃，就是 Regal。在我们 Regal 的话 ，software maintenance 这个费用实际上是相对比较低的，所以对客户应该不是什么问题。OK， Thomas。OK， we so have, I see the, the next.、Uh, we have time for one more question,、um, and and it's a very interesting question,、um, but we are going to try to answer it very very briefly、uh, since we are running out of time. Please email us if you have any further questions. So we are being asked. Uh, for uh, the accuracy between our TLS, our terrestrial laser scanners, and our aerial scanners, um, and um, we are asked if we are doing any comparisons. Obviously, we do,、uh, but there are fundamental differences between a terrestrial scanner and a kinematic or a mobile scanner. So, Thomas, please be my guest.、Yeah. Most important is、uh, yes. When it、uh, when we speak about accuracy, we always have to consider TLS is static scanning. While when you speak about aerial, I mean I think you mean the the ULS, the unmanned laser scanning from drones.、Uh, but it's the same with classical airborne laser scanning from a、uh, aircraft platform. This we call kinematic scanning. And even that the the sensors, the Regal laser sensors themselves are having more or less the same range performance, so the the same range measurement accuracy. Are you always have a, a lower accuracy when it comes to the point of kinematic scanning? Because most of the accuracy depends in kinematic scanning on the IMU. Uh, accuracy on the trajectory accuracy, which simply means the rotation and orientation of your lidar sensor, and and this is always the the critical factor. And normally we can say、uh, static scanning, TLS is factor ten more accurate than kinematic scanning. When we speak about terrestrial laser scanning, we are speaking about Millimeters of accuracy, while we speak in in kinematic scanning, maximum about centimeters of accuracy. But、um, your question was、uh, simply accuracy in volume and material.、Uh, and to be honest, if you simply measure a, a stockpile or、uh, uh, a volume,、um, I would say it is that the the, the The measurement accuracy of of any、uh, ULS system is really enough because you are then not interested in the millimeter; you are still in the centimeters. And it is much more important to have scan data, for example, from the whole、um, stockpile. And with TLS, you very often have a limitation here. You have scan shadows, while from an aerial perspective, you can cover everything. So that is. Much more important than, in principle, the overall accuracy of the lidar system. So I hope I could briefly answer it. 
Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you very much. And thank you, Ling Xiao, as well, for joining today. Um, and thank you to all of you, to, to our audience today. Uh, we have more webinars coming on this month, uh, and we will be bringing you more webinars uh, for, for our region, for the Asia-Pacific region. Um, so please get in touch with us. Uh, let us know what you're interested on. Uh, get in touch with our, our partners in your different countries as well. Um, and uh, thank you. Thank you again. Uh, Marcus, anybody want to ask? Quickly, uh, the last question, because I, I think it's a good question for ending the session. There was just a question. Okay. If, if uh, this webinar will be oh, yeah. available on a recorded version, and I can say, yes, it will be available via our marketing channels. Uh, so, of course, uh, uh, a recording will be available. Yeah, um, we will be following up. Uh, you will be receiving an email uh, with the link to the videos. Visit our YouTube channel, channel as well, Regal Ultimate LiDAR. Uh, you have a wealth of information. We have many, many webinars that are uh, in the Americas, in Europe, in, in different time uh, uh, zones. Um, if you're not able to attend those, um, you will be able to see them later on, on on our media channels. So please stay tuned. Thank you very much and see you soon. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye.